Laura Desmond, CEO of Starcom MediaVest, thanks for joining me. It's great to be here, thanks. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, sort of the evolution of uh, media buying these days. What is it that clients really need to understand and what are they still missing with regard to cross-channel um, media buying and also performance measurement, which is sure. so important? So I think the first thing is about a decade ago, most of the sophisticated marketers really started to understand that media was evolving so quickly that they had to think of their media departments and their media companies much more as just buyers and investors of their media. They needed to think about them strategically, understanding consumer insight and data, understanding how to put communication plans together. A lot of marketers several years ago began to understand that how you reach a target mm -hmm. is as important than what you say. And, and many marketers today would say for the future, how you reach them and how effectively and in the right experience that you reach them might be even more important than the pure messaging itself. Mm -hmm. So this business has come a long way and it's evolved. What we're really talking to our clients about, and that includes P&G and Coca-Cola and Walmart and Microsoft, is that you need to now understand cross-channel mm -hmm. experiences, how consumers follow content and brands from screen to screen. Mm -hmm. Our research shows that adults interact with screens 90% of their time when they're using media. Mm -hmm. That's a remarkable figure. Our research shows that 35% of adults are tweeting or following tweets when they're watching television. So we really want to get to the, the basics of how to think about cross-channel measurement from the standpoint of across all screens at the same time. That's the what, but then the how and the why. Mm -hmm. Why do people follow content from screen to screen? How does each screen and each channel amplify a story or a conversation and continue to build effective um, awareness and purchase intent for these brands. And you've dubbed this the experience, right? Which is so important. Yeah, we, we have moved to uh, a strategy of positioning at SMG around human experience. And we believe that um, we're entering into the converged marketing era. Mm -hmm. and, and convergence is really about connecting experiences from screen to screen, device to device. We've put a whole analytics suite together around how to track how people use media, why they participate with media, and how they flow from screen to screen and tell the stories in earned media. And we think the interaction between paid media, the mm -hmm. traditional world of you know, companies like mine, owned media, which is websites or points of distribution or stores or real estate, and earned media conversation, that interaction, paid, owned, earned, across screens, will really unlock the future of what this, this uh, industry is going to become. So let's talk about that. What are the implications on, on the media agency then, especially as, as media buying becomes automated, for example? Sure. What becomes the role of the media agency? So we've thought a lot about the fact that the core business of you know, companies like SMG, the media strategy, media planning, media buying, stays intact. Mm -hmm. Our clients still need this core work. But what we now have to add is a real immersion into data and analytics. Mm -hmm. Our role is not to create primary data. Our role is to integrate and to aggregate primary data like brand data, mm -hmm. primary data like media ratings and media consumption data, as well as proprietary insights. There's a lot to be said about big data and everyone needs to mine and, and know data. That's all true, but the truth of the matter is the key to targeting and optimization across channels is to really integrate brand, media, and proprietary consumer insights together. That's a big bet we're making. So you're partnering with a lot of companies to enable this, is that correct? Absolutely. One of our core principles is that as, as the consumer changes and as they are moving faster than any media company, digital company, uh, any client, we've got to be prepared to partner with companies who have best-in-class technology, resources, proprietary point of view, proprietary research methods in order to keep pace. And so we're very happy to partner with, with companies that have a similar open source uh, approach. Mm -hmm. um, these partnerships, in our view, are a key to this new era 
because I think the issues of the digital global marketplace are incredibly vast and large, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're moving at pace that um, would daunt anybody. And so we think partnerships are a way we can move faster. So share this, Comscore. Those are some examples of the companies you've partnered with. Yeah. So we've partnered with Share it, Share This to create a social quality index, which changes the way we evaluate TV programming and publisher content. Mm -hmm. We want content and programming that includes conversation and tells stories in a different way than just the rating or the audience it secures. We've partnered with Comscore to do a first of its kind global digital online video mobile social <laughs> data measurement. Um, Comscore is very much an up and comer in this space. They are extremely you know, flexible to work with. We like Comscore a lot and we think that's going to advance the industry uh, which has been dominated up till now by Nielsen. Uh, we've partnered with, uh, with Twitter. We released um, with Twitter the first of its kind landmark de deal about six weeks ago mm -hmm. where we'll be co-creating product and technology with Twitter in mobile tweet surveys, the first of its kind where we'll survey people and their attitudes in real time. A social TV lab where we're going to co-create a lab to understand how people use social as they're watching and participating in television. Mm -hmm. And then we will have uh, access to their API and source code and their data around consumers will fuel our modeling systems as well as our TV, or, or I'm sorry, as well as our media planning systems too. Let's talk about the Twitter um, partnership for, for a minute. Um, for a long time, advertisers and agencies looked at that as an experimental um, sort of area. Yeah. Um, you know, is your decision to partner with Twitter in such a, a, a broad scope um, indicative of, you know, real belief in, in, in what Twitter delivers um, for marketers? Or is it a hedge against the, the hope that, you know, in the future Twitter yeah. actually the, the audience will continue to grow and it will continue to be a platform for real yeah. branding? Yeah. Well, there are some watchers, especially in the Valley, who commented that the SMG deal with Twitter really validated Twitter mm -hmm. as, a, as a global uh, advertiser and consumer medium. Uh, we saw about 18 months ago that we were consistently adding them to our plans and our buying discussions, that they went very quickly from experimental to essential. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean essential to use 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. It means essential in the evaluation of communication plans. I think what's interesting about Twitter is there is an absolute dynamism going on between people watching things on their first or even second, third screen and then wanting to participate and experience them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. I watch my favorite show, Modern Family. I want to tweet about it. I want to participate in a community talking about it. And then I want my friends to see it. And so as we started to see this interaction between paid media and earned media, what we began to see is that Twitter is a couple things. It is a media platform which you can build brand experiences on top of mm -hmm. or content experiences on top of. Uh, what we did with Tide and uh, NASCAR racing is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Coke Polar Bear Bowl, a great example of that. Mm -hmm. So you can build experiences on top of the platform. Mm -hmm. But what's really interesting is that Twitter is acting as a bridge between channels. And so going back to the convergence marketing uh, uh, discussion that we and had earlier. And the need for data. And the need for data. You can put these things together mm -hmm. and see how paid media drives conversation and then how the bridges between channels amplify the conversations. What, what does that mean? Why is that interesting? That's interesting because the longer people talk about something, the higher their intent mm -hmm. to purchase or to experience it. And that creates brand equity and it creates brand purchase, and that's what clients want because they want higher ROIs with the same media spending.